Mark Dolly, DTM, served as the 2018-2019 Toastmasters International President. Mark has been a member of Toastmasters International since 1990. In her professional life, Mark has worked for marketing ma as a marketing manager for Texas Instruments, has owned a successful manufacturing business called Second Wave Incorporated, and has now works for Maxim as their Texas Project Enrollment Broker Training Manager. Lark often wears gold at Toastmasters events to signify the golden benefits we receive from Toastmasters without paying the price of gold to receive them. Lark resides in a lighthouse home that, on Lake Travis near Austin, Texas, USA, that her late husband, Roger, built in honor of their father-in-law, Arthur. Please help me welcome the golden leader herself, Lark Dolly, past international president. Good morning, District 3. It is a golden honor to be with you. And as I was chatting with Trish this morning, District 3 and I go way back. I ran for international director in 2003. I can't believe that that was 17 years ago. And at that time, District 3 was a part of Region 3. And that's where I was from. One of my first visits as an international director was to District 3. So it's like going home being with you today. And the leaders in District 3 have been my mentors since that time. I hope that today we will have a lot of fun and hopefully I also share a lot of knowledge. I am going to be showing a PowerPoint presentation and I will tell you that this PowerPoint presentation is packed with words. I normally don't like to have a lot of words in a PowerPoint presentation, but I want you to be able to use this PowerPoint presentation after today to refer back to it for any information about leadership roles of interest to you. So I look forward to talking with you today about what I believe are golden steps in leadership. We are going to be using the chat feature today throughout this presentation. And David has so kindly volunteered to be my chat master today. So open your chat because the first question that I want you to answer is why did you join Toastmasters? I want you to be succinct, concise. You can just give us a phrase, no more than a sentence about why you personally joined Toastmasters. There were many reasons why I joined Toastmasters, but one reason in particular was to gain speaking skills to be confident in front of business investors for my fledgling company at that time. And I achieved that, by the way. So David, why did the members of District 3 on this call today join Toastmasters? We only have a few answers so far, but DJ says to get out of herself. Karen says she was afraid to speak in public. Uh, David from District 64 was invited by a colleague to, and had fun in a meeting. Trish did, did table topics in order to survive an elevator conversation with the CEO. That's a great Whoa, one. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, if there's one more, give us one more. Uh, Sandy says to meet people, improve speaking skills. Great. Thank you all. All right. Now I want you to enter into the chat how long you have been a member of Toastmasters and why do you stay? So put the time and then why you stay. Now, as David announced, I celebrated my 30th year with Toastmasters in September of this year. I stay in Toastmasters because every single day I learn through this organization. And I also stay to give back just some of the benefits that I have received. So David, what are they saying in the chat? So Peter has been in Toastmasters 11 years and he, he stays because he wants to continue to grow. We have Karen's been in three and a half years and to continue to grow. Uh, Nancy has been in for 13 years and because it's lifelong member, uh, uh, learning. Michael Holian joined in 1996 and again, to the, continue to grow. So we've got a lot of continuing to grow yeah. and to learn. Okay. And I totally agree with that. And I love the statement, lifelong learning. Thank you so much. 
What have you gained from Toastmasters? So what I want you to think about, what skills have you gained or what else have you gained from Toastmasters? So write in the chat concisely what you have gained from this organization. And I'll begin with absolutely communication and leadership skills. One thing I gained that I never imagined when I joined Toastmasters was lifelong friends and lifelong friends from around the world. David, what are people saying in the chat? So we only have two answers so far. Jennifer says leadership and confidence. Well, now they're all rolling in. Of course, as soon as I say we only have two answers. <laughs> uh, interactions with others, confidence in speaking from Sandy Brogan. Uh, to find good mentors who are concerned about my development. That's from, I'm, I'm, I can't really pronounce your name. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> But uh, to find good mentors and uh, people who are concerned in developing them. Wonderful. Thank you all. All right. Now, those of you who are long term in this organization, those of you who are short term in this organization, what else do you want to gain? So what more can you gain from this organization? Well, I will tell you with the introduction of Pathways, I have a lot more that I can gain from this organization. I will say I met a member who has actually gone through all 11 paths already. I have not done that, but certainly I want to do that. And that will take me quite a while. So I look forward to learning from every single path in Pathways, gaining those 300 plus competencies that Pathways has to offer. All right, David, what are they saying in the chat for what else they want to gain? So a lot of people are saying they want to gain the opportunity to mentor others and to help others on their journeys, uh, to learn pathways. Uh, DJ talks about uh, to continue to learn, and so much. there's so much more to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Holian says he wants a better understanding of worldwide perspectives, which Ooh. those messages can definitely give. Absolutely. And, and, and of course, in our online world today, that is easy to do. And I hope that all of you will do that. Now you can visit countries around the world individually. One of my clubs, we are actually scheduling a meeting with a different club in a different country every month. So we are gaining so much understanding of cultures. And even though we have the same program, it is implemented uniquely around the world. So that global perspective, this is an amazing time for us to gain this without leaving the comfort of our homes. Thank you for that recommendation. Now, I want you to think about the leadership roles that you have held in this organization. And what I'd like you to think about is the lowest leadership role you have held. And let me describe this. I have held the lowest leadership role in this organization as president of this organization because we have this inverted organizational structure with the member at the top and the board of directors at the bottom. So think about the leadership roles you have held. Have you held a club role, an area role, a division role, a district role? a regional role, an international role. So if you would type the lowest leadership role that you have held in our organization. So type that into the chat. What are they saying, David? Well, we have a lot of DDs and past division governors on here. Uh, we have some uh, internet, we have an international past uh, district director. Okay. Immediate past district director. Uh, we have a couple area directors. Oh, all area directors or all area directors and below, it looks like. All right. Sounds golden. Thank you for that. And what has been your favorite leadership role so far? So enter into the chat your favorite leadership role so far. And I am going to share with you, as I have shared many times in my leadership journey, that area director is my favorite leadership role. And the reason it's my favorite leadership role is because that role directly touches the clubs. That role has a direct impact on our clubs and our members. So that is my favorite leadership role. What are they saying, David? 
Well, Sandy Brogan says one of her favorite was Pathways Ambassador and Area Ooh. Governor. VPE. VPE is one of my favorite roles too, DJ. Uh, Area Director, VPE, another uh, VPE. So a lot, of, a lot of them are saying club roles. Ah, great. Golden. All right. Now, I want you to write into the chat, what is your next step in Toastmasters? What is that next golden step that will give you golden benefits in this organization? If it's a leadership role, then enter the leadership role in the, in the chat that you would like to have. If it's a path in pathways that you would like to complete, if it's the Distinguished Toastmaster certification, type that into the chat. So what is your next golden step in Toastmasters? I will tell you that for the next two years, I do have a leadership role in Toastmasters. I am the International Leadership Committee co-chair this year, and then I'll be the chair next year. I also stepped up to leadership in my district as the district leadership committee chair. Those are my next steps in Toastmasters. David, what are they saying on the chat? So we have a few that are, want to get their pathways DTM. We have uh, one or two that wants to serve as a cup coach. But we do have somebody who wants to be an accredited speaker. Ooh. We have somebody who wants to be a, a regional advisor. Uh, we've got a couple club growth directors and a PQD in here. Wow, fantastic. Great. Yes, the accredited speaker program, that program is one I don't know that we publicize as much as we should. So congratulations on you wanting to pursue the accredited speaker designation. All right. I will tell you that I have been so privileged to be in this organization for 30 years. And David asked me to share a little bit about my story in this organization. Interestingly enough, it began in the 1980s when I worked for Texas Instruments. I was invited to the Texas Instruments Toastmasters Club. And this is what happened. At the meeting, I was called upon as a guest to present a table topic. I was the first person called upon to present a table topic. This was the first time I'd ever attended a Toastmasters meeting. I had no idea what a table topic was. And after being given the topic, I had very little to say about the topic. I left that meeting feeling like a failure. I did not join Toastmasters in the 1980s. In the 1990s, actually in 1990, multiple people invited me to attend Toastmasters club meetings. I was hesitant because of my first experience, but I went. I attended multiple clubs to find a fit for me. And one of those clubs said, hey, how would you like to go to the international convention this weekend? David Brooks from our district is competing in the world championship of public speaking. And we're taking a bus, only costs you $40. And that $40 will be the bus trip and getting you into the international speech competition. Pretty good price, don't you think? I went, I heard David Brooks win the world championship of public speaking and that sealed the deal. I thought I have to be a member of an organization that can teach skills like this. So I joined the Today Toastmasters Club. And three years later, I married the man on the left, Roger Storg. He was a charter member of Today Toastmasters. And then when his father from England decided to immigrate to the United States in 1994, Arthur joined Toastmasters as well. You should have seen the competition between the son and the father at Toastmasters. It was golden to experience. When Arthur died in 1997, a Toastmasters club was formed in his honor at the memorial service, unbeknownst to me, and I was elected the president, unbeknownst to me. And as you see, the club is still thriving and they received a banner with my name on it when I served as president. When I served as president, I had the incredible fortune to visit clubs and districts around the world. This is Malaysia, 
and this is China. Leadership opportunities in our organization are bountiful. And with every leadership opportunity, we gain skills and competencies. And that's what we want to discuss today. This is our leadership structure. And this is in our handbooks for all of you to view. I love looking at this and seeing the member at the top, the club executive committee, the club is our foundation, the areas that support the clubs, the divisions that support the areas, the districts that have the clubs within those areas and divisions and the district council that is made up of the presidents and vice presidents education of each club along with the district executive committee. Region advisors, so the regions around the world and finally our international board of directors. All of these are leadership opportunities that each of us can pursue. It all begins with the foundation of the club. The club mission, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. What an incredible mission. Ralph Smedley conceived of this over 90 years ago and we are still benefiting from it today. These are the leaders at the club level. These are the roles where we start our leadership journey in Toastmasters. I want you to type into the chat if you have served as a sergeant at arms, a treasurer, or a secretary, what skills and competencies you gained in any of those roles. So type into the chat now if you have served as a sergeant at arms at your club, a treasurer or a secretary, the skills or competencies that you gained in those leadership roles. And I want to share with you, when I visited New Zealand, a member of one of the districts there came up to me and said, my title for the sergeant at arms is the vice president of first impressions. And I've never forgotten that. The Vice President of First Impressions was his title for the Sergeant at Arms. And then of course, the Treasurer, core values of honesty, integrity, right? To make sure that the finances of the club are maintained. The Secretary, all of the records of the club, so important to every single club. All right, so David, what are they saying in the chat about skills, competencies that they gained as being a sergeant at arms, a treasurer, or a secretary of a Toastmasters club? Well, Trish said for sergeant at arms, they taught her the importance of making a good first impression. Peter says treasurer brought him, uh, presented budget for approval and taught him how to present a budget for approval. Uh, we've got planning, organization, and auditing, timely reporting. Beautiful, absolutely. Those are skills and competences that we gain in those roles. And this is just a few of them, and you have mentioned these. In every single club leadership role, core values are something that we always need to maintain in each role. And time management is a skill that we gain in every leadership role at the club level. Planning and organization, goes through most of our club leadership roles, but there are specific skills and competencies that we gain in each of the club leadership roles, as you have indicated. All right, so now, if you have served as a vice president in a club, a vice president public relations, vice president membership, or vice president education, please enter into the chat the skills and or competencies that you have gained in those club leadership roles. And when I think about each of these, the Vice President of Public Relations, so critical to make sure that we promote our clubs. Vice President of Membership, when that guest walks in the door, that VP membership is responsible for making sure that that guest 
becomes a member. And then, of course, vice president education. Why did that member join? The vice president education is responsible for making sure that every member achieves their goals and Toastmasters. All right, so David, what are they entering into the chat for the skills and competencies they gained in a vice president role in their club? Team building, leading, listening to others and managing pace, marketing management, ensuring roles are filled the day or the week before the meeting, creative thinking, planning, team building, a lot of team building. Beautiful. I am so glad to hear that because we want teams at the district level, but we also want them at the club level. And many clubs don't form teams. So I am thrilled that somebody has talked about teams at the club level. Multiple people have talked about teams at the club level. All right, so here are some of the skills and competencies that we talk about. And absolutely, PR and membership, marketing, 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 right? So. At the end of every single club meeting you attend, the VP membership should thank the guests for coming and invite them to join, right? How many club meetings have you attended where that doesn't happen? It's so important that we close the sale. Let them know that we want them to join our club. Send them information afterwards if they're still hesitant. But absolutely, we need to be that sales and marketer in our VP public relations and membership role. VP education, boy, goal setting, organization, planning, and absolutely every role filled before the club meeting is so important to have golden club meetings. All right, now, if you have served as a president of a club, what are the skills and competencies you have gained as the president? So, Write, down, write in the chat the skills and competencies you have gained as the president of a Toastmasters club. And when I think about this, I'm so proud of my corporate club for stepping up in the last few years. They struggled. They've struggled over a period of time. But we have such an enthusiastic president this year. And last year, we had a good one, too. But she is Madam Enthusiasm. And that carries a long way. All right, so David, what are they saying in the chat? We have a couple conflict resolutions, uh, meeting management, uh, delegation, conflict resolution again, motivation. Motivation is a good one. Uh, membership uh, meeting management is a good one too. Yeah, you know what? I don't know that I have that in here, so I will add that after this. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I've got management in here, but it's people management and meeting management, so very, very good. President has to be a strong communicator. The president has to form a strategy, a strategic direction for the club that we hope will be a long-term strategic direction, setting and achieving goals. So leadership qualities, right? But also teams. So I'm so glad you had said teams previously, but the president needs to make sure that building teams, implementing teams, developing those teams, collaboration within the officers and those teams and delegating, delegating to the officers and making sure that they follow through. All right, clubs are formed into areas. So we have clubs and we group four to six clubs together to make an area. The district mission is we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. The area director role is the first level of district leadership. And Sarah was your area director of the year for the 2019-2020 year. So David, is Sarah with us today on the call? She is not. But we do have some former area directors. Maybe Jennifer would like to say something. Ah, I was going to say I met Jennifer at the beginning of this. So that is perfect. All right. So Jennifer, I want to know the main responsibilities of an area director. And again, I'd like you to be succinct. So if you could describe the responsibilities of an area director in just a couple of sentences, Think about the main responsibilities. And then if you would take yourself off mute 
and speak those to all of us? Well, the main, the main responsibility is because you're assisting the leader um, <clears throat> is to connect with them, understand them, and listen. That's the main responsibility. <laughs> oh, that, that is powerful. That is powerful. All right. Anyone who has served as an area director, now it's your turn. You get to type into the chat what you consider to be a responsibility of an area director. Jennifer expressed it very well and very succinctly. So let's see how well you can do. I mentioned before we started today that area director was my favorite leadership role. And I look forward to serving as an area director in a couple of years after I have completed my service to the international organization, I want to be an area director again because they directly touch the clubs and that is powerful to me. All right, so David, is anybody entering into the chat what they say are the main responsibilities of an area director? Yes, we have a lot of supporting clubs, supporting members, being the liaison between the club and the district. We also have building meaningful relationships uh, serving the members. That's a good oh, one. Those are brilliant. All right. So let's see what the handbook says. Absolutely. The direct liaison between the clubs and the district. Club visits twice a year. Oh, I say in COVID world, we ought to be able to visit those clubs as often as time permits. The handbook talks about connecting with the presidents monthly. And what I would say is why not hold an area council meeting monthly, at least every other month, but the opportunity to share with the club, share best practices, support the club. So to me, the main benefit of an area council is for the clubs in the area to support one another, to strengthen one another to have exchanges of speakers, of Toastmasters, of evaluators, of role players, anything to what they can do to support one another. Now, all right, if you have served as an area director, I want you to type into the chat a skill or a competency that you gained as an area director. So if you have served as an area director, type into the chat a skill you have gained as an area director. Now, those of you who've not served as an area director yet, you are welcome to type into the chat what you'd like to gain as an area director. So you see the responsibilities here for an area director. What would you like to gain to serve in that role? And if you have not served in that, that role, then we welcome you to consider serving in that role. All right, so David, do we have any competencies for area directors that have been entered? Yes, uh, organizational skills, communication, ambition, and humility. Ooh. Communication, a lot of communication, building a team, uh, working with a communication strategy. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Well, thank you all. I will tell you that I put at the top of this list developing trust. Because in order to be able to support the clubs in your area, you have to develop trust with those clubs. If you walk in the door or Zoom in the door of a club and immediately tell them what they've done wrong, that's like a bad speech evaluation, isn't it? Right? You have to listen. You have to observe. And when you are an area director, you have to develop trust with your clubs before you can ever give them feedback. And again, area council meetings are a golden opportunity for you to develop trust with each of the clubs in your area and for them to develop trust with one another. And then all of the other skills that you said and that are listed here. All right. The next level in district leadership is the division. Areas are grouped together into divisions. Clubs are grouped together to form areas. Areas are grouped together to form divisions. So our division director of the 2019-2020 year was Edwin, Edwin Weston. 
Is Edwin by any chance present with us today, David? No, he's not, but I have lined up Connie Weiss for you. Ah, Connie. All right. So, Connie, I want you to succinctly state the division director responsibilities. So what are the division director responsibilities? They include guiding, mentoring, coaching, being a information resource, and helping resolve conflicts within the clubs and among other area directors. Wow, thank you so much. Well said. All right, everyone. So if you've served in the division director role, now you have the opportunity to type into the chat what you believe are the responsibilities of the division director. In this role, it's more of a management role. So the area directors, they interact directly with the clubs. But as a division director, you are interacting with the area directors and in supporting them in supporting their clubs. So you are supporting the area directors more than anything in this role. However, I will tell you when I was a division director, I had so much fun visiting every club in the division. And again, now in our online world, that would be a lot easier than traveling from club to club, literally from the comfort of your own home, visiting those clubs. All right, David, what are they saying in the chat? Cohesive teams, created success, creating successive succession plans, supporting and guiding area directors, uh, being a liaison, providing guidance to ADs. Beautiful. All right. So let's see what the handbook says. Leading and supporting the area directors is the main responsibility. But this sub-level is ensuring that all clubs are fulfilling the club mission. So area directors are the direct line of support to the clubs, and the division director needs to work with those area directors to make sure that they are being as effective as possible in supporting the clubs to fulfill the club mission. Working with the area directors, hopefully connecting with them on a monthly basis, and coordinating all the division activities. Now, another responsibility is to grow our organization. So the division directors, we want them to be responsible for ensuring the retention of the clubs in their division and growing, adding clubs in their division as well. Those of you who have served as division directors, I want you now to type into the chat skills and competencies that you gained in the role. And if you haven't filled that role yet, but you want to fill that role. Oh, we've got somebody that's off of mute. If you just put yourself on mute. All right. And those of you who have not served in that role, but want to serve into that role, then go ahead and type into the chat the skills and competencies you want to gain in that role. You now know what the role is. So what skills or competencies would you like to gain? David, what are they saying in the chat? Team building, uh, challenging building cohesive teams. So team building again, that's the only two right now. All right. Well, that's team building is a good one. Again, this is a management role. So this is managing the area directors and the areas supporting them and supporting the clubs, empowering those area directors, mentoring them, coaching them to be the best area directors they can possibly be, critical thinking, analytical skills, collaboration, and obviously in every leadership role in our organization, every single one, the core values. All right, now at the district level, we have several leadership roles. And I like to call these the district cabinet. These are published roles for Toastmasters. And then within each of these roles, there are opportunities for other leadership roles that the districts decide to form. Districts are given the opportunity to form district, district committees, and they can decide which district committees they need. And we're going to look at the ones that District 3 has. I was amazed in awe of all of the committees that you have 
in District 3. And again, that increases the leadership opportunities for every member in District 3. So let's start with the logistics manager. So the logistics manager role used to be assets, making sure that physical spaces for meetings, con conferences was set up and set up well in advance. Now we're in our online world. So again, that role has changed. Do we have any logistics managers from the district present today, David? Uh, Steve, uh, Sheldon's not here, and I don't know if anybody else has served as logistic manager. All right. So it's fascinating that the district leadership roles map pretty consistently over to the club leadership roles. So logistics manager, does that sound like sergeant at arms to you? It is just at the district level. So let's look at the responsibilities of the district sergeant at arms, which is known as logistics manager. All right, in our online environment, the logistics manager needs to manage the team that is going to facilitate online meetings. And these online meetings will be the district council meeting, the district executive committee meetings, it will be contests, and if you are going to have an online conference, then the online conference. So this role has evolved into being savvy with Zoom or whatever web sharing tool you are using. And Zoom has become the one of choice in most clubs and districts around the world. So all of those selecting the locations and maintaining the district property, I hope that we will do that again in 2021, but certainly up until now, we are fully online. So what skills and competencies can an individual gain in this role? So again, those of you who've served as a Sergeant at Arms, you know what you gained in that role at the club level. And it's similar to what you would gain at the district level, but let's look at this. So again, I will tell you District 55 has a lot of assets. They have sound equipment, they have video equipment, they have projectors. So they have lots of physical assets that they use whenever we meet in person. But if you look at all of this, the logistics manager in today's world is going to need to be resourceful, create a team, and make sure that that team has the technical expertise to manage our online world. All right, the finance manager. So is Beatrice with us today or anyone who served as a finance manager, David? She is not, but Peter served as a finance manager. Ah, all right. Peter, current district director. All right, Peter, I'm putting you on the spot. So, Peter, what are the main responsibilities of the district finance manager? It, it would be to help the trio prepare the budget to make sure that it is in line with their goals for the year and also to present it at the DEC and the DC and then to give updates at every deck in DC. Oh, beautiful oh. job, Peter. I now know why you are the, the district director, obviously. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely, very succinctly said, right? And dispersing the funds for any expenses, but absolutely everything you said so succinctly. Thank you, Peter. All right, so Peter, I'm going to ask you for this one as well. So when you think about the skills and competencies that you gained as the district finance manager, how would you describe those? What are some of those? I, I believe that the main one is to, to be thorough. Uh, when, when you input something, you got to make sure it goes into the right bucket because a food expense going into, I, I don't know, some travel or TLI that doesn't belong there can really throw off the budget and can raise a lot of hands at the meetings. So it's, it's to be very thorough. And then of course there's presentation skills. The first time you present that budget, your hands are shaking, <laughs> but after a while it becomes a, a lot easier to present. Wow, thank you so much. <clears throat> so absolutely at the district level, I will tell you that it is appropriate to have someone who has 
uh, an accounting background, fiscal management background. So because they are responsible for thousands of dollars at the district level and everything that Peter has said about budgeting and reporting disbursements of funds and making sure that they are going into the right buckets. All of that is so critical in that role. Now at the club level, we have the treasurer. And at the club level, certainly we don't want to compile large dollar amounts, but again, there's the fiscal responsibility at the club level as well, just on a much larger scale at the district level. Peter, thank you so much. All right, the administration manager at, of the district. So is Shelly with us today? Shelly is Hi, here. Mark. Hello, Shelly. <laughs> awesome to talk to you. All right, Shelly, you know the drill. So I want you I to drill. tell us succinctly the main responsibilities of the district administration manager. And funny you should ask me that question because I was at, I'm, I was asked by Peter to give a presentation at training next Saturday on my position and wow. how I help with the district. So I have a PowerPoint that's all ready and I'm going to read from my PowerPoint. How does that sound? All <laughs> right. Just not the whole thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Okay. Information about my role. I maintain and update the district dignitary list. I write and proofread any correspondence for the district when I'm asked to do so. I create the district calendar. I take meeting minutes at the district executive committee meeting, the district council meeting, and any other meetings that we may have. I prepare ballots and packets for the DEC and the DC meetings. I work closely with the trio and the district director, but also I recruit the functionaries for both the DEC meeting and the district council meeting. How's wow, that, work? that is golden. All right, so now <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Shelly, the next question is, I want you to describe a couple of skills or competencies that you have gained by serving in this role. What are a couple of skills and competencies that you've gained? Organization, attention to detail, being organized, um, getting a mentor, getting a mentor for my role because I've never served as this role before. Right. No, ha no, getting somebody who has been on the role, but also who knows what the role is and that's been in district leadership before. And it so happens my mentor for this year is Nancy Star Cassidy. Ah. Oh. My favorite person, <laughs> one of my favorite people. I served with her and so love Nancy. Tell her I said hello. And, All right. Uh, so she actually helped me with my present my PowerPoint. So. Go, Nancy. All right. So well <laughs> said, Shelly. All of the responsibilities that Shelly said, she does more than it actually tells her to do, but I would expect nothing less of District Three. And the skills and competencies that she talked about, organization is at the top. And that's the one that Shelly mentioned first. All right, now, District 3, look at these administrative committees. If you want a leadership role in District 3, you have bountiful opportunities. Look at all of these roles in District 3. And I hope that you will consider these roles in the future, in your future. All right, public relations manager. Steve Feld is the public relations manager. Is he present or do you see anybody else, David, who has served in this role? Uh, he is not present. Cynthia, have you served as public relations manager? Yes, I have. Oh, all right, Cynthia, you are on. Okay, so Cynthia, succinctly just tell us the main responsibilities of the public relations manager for the district. For the district at that level is getting the word out about the existence of Toastmasters and how it could benefit not only the individual, but for corporations. Mm, beautifully said, beautifully said. All right, so Cynthia, I'm gonna put you on the spot again. So what are skills and competencies, a few of them that you gain by serving in this role? Looking at where are unusual places to advertise 
or highlight the benefits of Toastmasters, taking advantage of existing advertising media or channels to get the word out and demonstrate how Toastmasters can be a benefit. It, it makes all the difference in being able to even contribute. Hey, if these members were Toastmasters, here's how they could benefit and improve their uh, presentation, their uh, pre presence to the media. So yeah, beautiful. Different. beautiful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, succinctly said, and the public relations responsibility is absolutely to increase the visibility of Toastmasters within the geographic territory of your region. And skills and competencies, boy, you gotta have a marketing strategy, a marketing mindset, and of course, knowledge of Toastmasters brand and online PR resources and promote, promote, promote. All right. Again, in District 3, look at the public relations committees that you have. Again, an opportunity to serve District 3. All right. Club Growth Director, is Karen with us, David? Yes, she is. Hi, Karen. So, Karen, give us a couple of sentences about the club growth director responsibilities. Okay, so the club growth director responsibilities can be split into two sections. One is to help clubs maintain strong clubs by building membership, attracting new membership and retention. And the other one is by inviting new clubs into the district so that way we can grow our district, all relating back to that district mission. Beautiful. Absolutely. Building new clubs and supporting all clubs and achieving excellence. Great job, Karen. All right, Karen, my next question for you, as you know. So what skills and competencies have you already gained in serving in this role? Ooh, I have gained so many, but the biggest one I would say is the ability to build large committees. Club mm -hmm. growth is a, is a monumental role and it is so much easier if you build almost an army of people to help you take on each area. So that was my first challenge and it was one of the most rewarding skills to learn. Brilliant. And you know, I don't remember whether that's at the top of the list, but I think I'm going to change the presentation if it's not, because I totally agree with you. An army of volunteers to help with the club growth responsibilities. Thank you so much. All right. So responsible for club building and club retention. And that's exactly what Karen said. And team building is in here. It's number four. So I may need to move it to the top. Thank you, Karen, so much. All right. And look, these are the committee chairs that Karen has, but as she said, there's an army underneath each one of these chairs roles. So again, thank you all for volunteering. And for those of you who haven't volunteered yet, wow, great place to start. Now our program quality director, my chat master, David. So David, what are the main responsibilities of the program quality director? So the program quality director focuses on club quality in both in education, training, but there's also a, being a member of the trio. We work together as a trio, so we work on everything together. But uh, we look at the DCP as, uh, as program quality, DCP, and especially TLI. The big ones are TLI and conference. Those are the big events of the year, and that falls under the program quality. Thank you so much. All right, David, you know the drill. So what are the skills and competencies you've already gained this year in this role? Uh, definitely building teams. I mean, the large events, you can't do them yourself. Uh, you have to plan a long time in advance. So strategic planning, get, getting strategic planning out there, budgeting, uh, working with teams, all the, all the normal stuff, but larger. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, David. Well done. I absolutely agree with what David has just expressed. And I think I'm going to need to put team building at the top of this one too. All right. And look, here are the education and training committees of district three, pure gold. And under these teams of people, armies of people to support education and training in district three. 
All right. The district director, the captain of the ship in rough waters and in calm waters. And we have had quite a bit of rough waters in the last two years. So Peter, I want you to now express the main responsibilities of the district director. Thank you for doing so for finance. And now it's your opportunity to discuss the role of district director. All right. Thank you, Lark. That's a great question. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I guess there's two, two extremities. Uh, number one is to ensure that we carry out the district mission. And, uh, you know, we do so. And when I say we, I mean, we, you know, yeah. the trio, the seven, the division directors, and a lot of our, our committees that help us set the strategic plan for the year. And, and we do so via the district success plan. And then on the, the most important part is to support the members and the clubs, to ensure that they're getting information from TI down to them, ensure that they, they receive it and they understand it. Just like the, the new path, we, we wanna make sure that every member that had paid their dues was aware of the new path. Absolutely. And also to get them the tools needed. Sometimes they, they're missing something and it's something that it's available. So we gotta match them to that tool. Uh, it, you know, It could be something as simple as how to enroll in the path. We, they're like, I don't know how to enroll. Well, guess what? We have a YouTube, we have a training, we have a mentor that we can tie you up with. So that's what I mean by it's it's ultimately supporting the members and the clubs of the district. Great. Great, Mr. Captain. Captain. All right. Now, the next question, as you know, so what skills and competencies have you gained serving in this role so far? Uh, I believe somebody said it earlier. It was a broader leadership perspective. Leading at the club level, it was a great experience. Leading as an area director, better. At leading as a district director was very challenging because now you have a lot of clubs, a lot of members. And um, without the strategic planning, without the support of your teams that, that are there to support you and the members, it, it's very hard. So I think that's what I gained mostly is that broader leadership perspective and understanding, as you said, you had the highest, the lowest role in Toastmasters was, was <laughs> international president. And that's kind of like the lowest role in the district is district director because um, you, you have to respond to everybody. Right, right. Well done, Mr. District Director. All right, absolutely. The CEO of the district, the captain of the district ship, maintaining that leadership of the entire district. And when you look at the skills and competencies at the top of that is management management of people and management of resources, strategic planning, strategic implementation for your district. All right, well, districts are grouped together in regions and we have 14 regions around the world. And Violetta Rios is your Region 3 advisor this year. I had the privilege to serve as a region advisor for two years and again, I was the Region 3 advisor from 2010 to 2012. The Region Advisor supports the districts. And the main skills of this and competencies are mentoring, coaching, organization, and I would say cheerleader. All right, World Headquarters. All of you know World Headquarters supports our global organization. CEO Daniel Rex in Inglewood, Colorado now with over 100 staff members supporting our global membership. And then the board of directors. I had the privilege to serve on the board of directors as an international director from 2003 to 2005. And then in international officer leadership from 2015 to 2020. It was my golden honor to do so. This year, Richard Peck, Richard E. Peck is our international president and TK O'Geary is the international director from region three. The main responsibility of the board of directors is the strategic direction of our organization. And I am so pleased that Peter mentioned the free path for every member of our organization. I was honored to be on the board last year when the pandemic struck but I have been in awe of the decisions that the board of directors has been making to support our members, our clubs, our districts around the world. I had the privilege to work with these two individuals 
and I know that they will lead our organization to a golden future. It has been my honor to be with you today. I hope that you've learned some things about the different leadership roles from the club all the way through the district level. And if you ever want to know more about the regional position of region advisor, international director, international officer positions, I would be honored to speak with you, honored to communicate with you. And my contact information is if you'll send me an email at ldoley at toastmasters.org, then we can set up a time to get together. And if you want to serve in any leadership role, I'm honored to talk with you. But specifically, if you want to talk about the region advisor role, international director or international officer role, then I would be happy to do that since we didn't focus on that today. My favorite leadership quote is, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. So District 3, what is your next golden step in leadership? I hope that you will continue in leadership throughout your Toastmasters journey, supporting District 3 or wherever you are in our world. David, it has been a golden honor to be with you today. If there's any time left and anyone has any questions, I would be honored to answer them. Yes, we have about three minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So if people want to just ask you directly, they can do that.